They will zoo December 2023. I'm not going to go over all the animals as I didn't film every one of them, but just the ones I found somewhat interesting. Here we see two donkeys just chilling. But yeah, as soon as I got close to them, they were like, can we have some privacy, please? I'm not sure if the horse is looking to be pet. Can't really understand horses, so I haven't really observed their behavior enough because they look so stoic all the time. Mm. Also, this is the this is actually the resurrected horse of Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. The green pit viper seemed to be sleeping, or maybe it was pretending to and ready to strike an RKO out of nowhere. So when I looked at this python, the first thing that popped into my head was my friend's cat. I'll show a picture as well. I mean, don't they look alike? I mean, well, not their body, but their faces, the face and the eyes, they look very similar to me.
Here we have some anacondas sprayed out of South America. Two of them are cuddled together here, and the other one is just staring into the void there. Well, the, the sunlight, but pondering when will I ever be free? I wasn't born in South America, I wanted to be locked up in a zoo in Sri Lanka. The myth of Snakey first. Unless you look closely, you may not really identify this brown wine snake. Here we have a green wine snake. I wonder what these wine snakes, I mean, what wine these wine snakes like. Next, we have the Indian Gavial, more commonly known as Gario. And these are critically endangered. You're only going to be seeing a picture here because I try to record it. And as soon as I approached it, it kind of went under the water and it wasn't that clear. And then I did some reading. And apparently, they are quite shy of people. So that might be the reason. Anyway, these look pretty cool. Like, mm, like old school reptiles. I don't know. My first impression was like, this species must be pretty damn old. Here we have an Indian Russell's Viper, and you can see they got this diamondish pattern on their body. And I don't know, is it trying to escape? Well, it's just pretty sad seeing them enclosed. And also, apparently, they're highly venomous. Wonder. Wonder if I can take a bite from them and see what happens to me. Aha. Uh -huh. This is a gibbon. And just, just look at how long its arms are, how slender and long. And this is what you call a swing up, not a push up, not a pull up, but a swing up. Who needs a swing when you can just use your hands? Next, we'll look at the Hamadryas baboons. You can pause this video right here and read some more if you wish. So there's a male and a female in this enclosure. And both, uh, both of them are, they look quite different. Uh, what you will see here is someone uh, throwing a banana at the male. It's like it, they throw it right at him. It hits his head and he starts eating it. And then they also throw another one at the female, but so the male just goes and gets that banana as well. I mean, unfortunately, it's not an equal dynamic, uh, a more male dominant dynamic. Right next to the baboons is an orangutan enclosure. Uh, when I went, it wasn't there. But anyway, so uh, there's this board as well, you know, about not feeding or teasing animals, and these boards are in some of the places as well. Now, the people might think, hey, I mean, we're just feeding the animals, no harm, right? No. There's obviously multiple reasons for that. One, what you feed might not be good for the animals. Another reason is like, uh, these animals are fed at certain times and certain amount of food. So there's a chance you might make them overweight or something. Yes most animals here are underweight 
Uh, but still, and uh, the worst case scenario is going to be uh, they might be poisonous. I mean, you could technically, even intentionally or unintentionally, uh, you could poison the animals. So there's a reason why they're kept it. And I don't know, maybe like in the tickets, if it's the reasons I mentioned as to why you're not encouraged to feed the animals, it might um, help more people follow the guidelines. But I don't know, if people are stupid, they're just still going to do it. Also, those pink buds are apparently exaggerated sexual swellings, at least according to Sam Patterson from Danta blog. While I was walking around, this jumping spider got on me. Uh, and I just felt something and, it, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, cute jumping spider. So jumping spiders are, you know, tiny. And they're very cute and curious as well. If you're someone scared of spiders, these are probably great spiders to help you overcome that fear. So this one was, um, I'm just pa patiently waiting for it to get on my hand. Now, I would have been okay with the spider uh, with me, but it was actually like almost crawling near my face so I had to get it away um, and I would have been cool with walking around to zoo with this but yeah probably might be uncomfortable for both of us so I just I eventually had to just put it away uh, near a plant but yeah every time every time I meet a jumping spider I love them because like I would say they're like the cats of the spider world yeah Jumping spiders are the cats of the spider world. They're cute and they're curious. So this is Simba, or at least that's the name. It is Lion Cub. What's happening here is, so there was a small kid, probably three or four years old, uh, who was very close to the fence and so Simba got excited and kind of charged towards him. I don't know, I've seen this happen. Whenever there are small kids, uh, the big cats seem to charge towards them, but not towards the adults usually. I wonder why. Is it like maybe they're easy prey? Finally, to the main attraction of the zoo, the goats, the tigers. So there's three of them here, and I 
think there's also another one um, that was elsewhere. So these three were quite young, I think like maybe two years old, I'm not sure, like last year or some years back, they were really small. Unfortunately, I couldn't meet them back then. If you ever had cats or there are cats around and you observe them, you would know that even tigers are like so much like their small house cats, except for the fact where they like spending time inside the water. They are very much alike. These tigers, they're, well, they're quite young and they seem to be well fed. Just hoping that the other animals uh, can be well fed too, because a lot of the animals, they look, you know, very um, sick or very lean, especially like the lions. And there was also this bear that looked very thin. Their reaction huh? just looked just huh? like the hard cat. Huh? There's this artificial kind of like waterfall that separates the tigers from the jackals. This right here is a black jaguar, not a black panda. And both the jaguars look pretty chunky. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy. That's a thick-ass boy.
These are the three lines I mentioned. So one at the top, two at the bottom. They look pretty tired and lifeless. The flamingos were feasting on some prawns and seafood. This white bird is called a spoonbill because it has a bill that looks like a spoon. I don't, I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it's cleaning its spoon. Something got stuck. life or the next. This is pretty shitty. I mean, there's a bunch of sharks and ray fish. There's definitely not enough room for all of them. I mean, you don't get to see, the old, see these animals elsewhere. Most people won't, unless you're very lucky. And there are very, plenty of beautiful animals to see. So yeah, I would recommend. 